Welcome back to Thrani. I'm Joe B. It's time for our segment. Help you be you. So this is the segment where you, your loved one, or your patient has physical therapy questions that we can answer to improve their symptomatic, functional, and educational outcomes. I will be a physical therapist, and in my 19th year in the profession, I'm currently a lead physical therapist of an outpatient rehab facility, an adjunct instructor of a DPT program, and a visual illustrator for PT colleges and universities around the globe. Our batch of questions today comes from Aman from India. Namaste, Aman. According to Aman, he has noticed that his left shoulder and left hip is higher than the right side with no noted pain and no aggravating factors for the postural asymmetry. Based from the findings that you presented, Aman, you may be having an S-curve scoliosis, which can be acquired congenitally or from a prolonged faulty posture. X-rays can pretty much confirm this condition through calculation of what you call a Cobb's angle. You can have two types of S-curve scoliosis, a traditional S-curve where there is a left thoracic convexity and a right lumbar convexity. You can also have an opposite facing S-curve where there would be a right thoracic convexity and a left lumbar convexity. The assessment to confirm an S-curve scoliosis is by performance of the forward bending test. The patient is asked to bend forward while keeping the knee straight with the hands trying to touch the floor. The therapist will be behind the patient eye level at the patient's buttock or pelvis. For a traditional S-curve scoliosis, a left posterior thoracic rib hump should be observed and a right lumbar rib hump. To treat, you need to perform one effective stretching exercise and one effective strengthening exercise. For the stretching exercise, we are going to perform what you call an ambling walk. The patient will be in a quadruped position. And if your patient has a traditional S-curve scoliosis, then there would be tightness on the right thoracic muscles and the left lumbar paraspinals. The patient is then asked from a quadruped position to slide the right hand and the right knee upwards. The position is held for three reps for 30 seconds, and this should stretch those tight structures. For strengthening exercises, it's very important to perform a basic bird dog exercise. For a patient with a traditional S-curve scoliosis, there will be weakness of the left parathoracic muscles and the right lumbar paraspinals. That being said, in a quadruped position, the patient is asked to raise the right lower extremity first in such a way that the hip and knee are extended. And then after that, raise the left upper extremity straight ahead. It's very important that before raising, the tummy is tucked in to stabilize the spine. The position is held for six seconds for 10 reps and eventually progress the hold times and the rep times. Thank you so much, Aman, for reaching out. If you have any questions with these exercises, please do reach out. We still do suggest that you see a physical therapist in your area so they can further assess your symptoms and further help you. Thank you so much.